Rub up your engines! Here we have a BMW i3 electric car. Now I know most people are gonna say, I'm not gonna spend 50, 60 grand for this tiny little car. They even call it a subcompact. But this man was smart. He bought it used. He paid 21,500 for it with only 31,000 miles. The original owner paid close to 60 grand for the car, which shows if you really wanna get an electric car, buy a used one. You buy electric cars, used is the way to go. You know, I told everybody I knew a guy in Houston, Tesla was 126 grand, he bought it used for 45 with only 15,000 miles. You can pick them up dirt cheap. You're a fool to buy a brand new one. They're just overpriced, totally overpriced. They call this a subcompact mini car, but hey, it's bigger than a mini. Of course, it's streamlined. Now, take the suicide door. You get people in there, not extremely large people, but <laughs> his knees fits in there, you know? Let's check under the hood here. There's no motor in the front. Well, there's no motor in the back either. How does this thing work? It's got an electric motor that has a decent range. They say they're rated at 156 miles and he said he's gone 150 160 at the max it has a decent range he actually commutes 60 miles one way but you don't have to be worried in this particular bmw being stranded when you run out of juice and here's why not just an electric motor you can see this has engine oil in it inside here is a bmw two-cylinder motorcycle engine. They call it a range extender. Nine liter little gas tank, which runs a two-cylinder BMW motorcycle engine, very dependable engine, which then runs the car. So you might think, how fast is this car gonna go with a little bitty two-cylinder motorcycle engine running it? It still runs at full speed. The motor does not run the car. The motor runs a generator, which charges the battery, so you still have full power. The motor automatically comes on when you get below a certain parameter and it's got a range of about 60 extra miles. Now you'd say that's not all that efficient, that's like you know 30 miles a gallon, but that's because it's a motor and they're somewhat inefficient. Then it's running a generator and there's lots of power there. Then the generator sends power to the battery where there's a little bit lost there and then the battery sends power to the wheels and there's a little bit of power loss there. That's why they don't make them with a little bitty motor motorcycle engine driving the battery because <laughs> it wouldn't be that efficient. You could get a car like this to get 50, 60 miles a gallon with a gasoline engine only. It'd be stupid to have a little bitty motorcycle engine running an electric motor because you're still running a motor. It's a range extender. So you never have to worry about being stranded. And let's say you're a person who doesn't like sitting all that long on trips. Well, you could just keep filling the nine liters up and go 60 miles at a whack and rest, have a coffee, maybe a cigarette. <laughs> and fill it up with nine liters of gasoline and drive another 60 miles if you want. You're not gonna be stranded somewhere. That's the big point. And now also realize, since this is a pretty compact vehicle, if you happen to be somewhere where there's a supercharger, 30 to 45 minutes will fully charge it. And if you got a 240 set up at your house, it takes four or five hours so easily overnight. Or if you work somewhere where there's a 240 outlet, he's got his little plug here. He can plug it in and charge it up. You can see you can go quite a distance. And let's say you forgot and you're in a rush. Well, you still got 60 miles of gasoline. I think they should have put like, I don't know, four Four gallon gas tank in it, right? For four gallons, hey, then you could go 120 miles. Maybe the whole thing was, they don't want people to use the gas, so they put a little bit of gas tank in it. I would have put a bigger gas tank in it, just so you would have a bigger range, and you'd have the best of both worlds. If you look at these tires, they're kind of the opposite of where everyone's going. These are skinny tires. Guess what? Skinny tires have less friction. Stop and go traffic, he's gone over 200 miles on that with it regenerating the power, and the tires are using less friction, so there's less power loss, and you can go further. Everybody else is going big, fat tires for traction. Well, this went the opposite way. It's going to skinny tires. So let's take it for a spin and see what it sounds like, or doesn't sound like. Now check it out, old technology. Manual seats. What is BMW thinking? You have to physically pull on it. I guess they figure people with electric cars are more into exercising. <laughs> Now when you start it up, does a lot of dinging, but of course everything's electronic. We got it reverse. I take the parking brake off, and we're ready to go backwards. Nice quiet car. If you appreciate silence, you appreciate this car. It's running right now.
We're gonna go slow because it's a gigantic bump up here, but it made it over fine. Up on the gas, it takes off pretty quick. Show your range, says he's got 138 miles to go. Weather report while you're driving down the road, whether you want it or not. This is one quiet little rocket ship. It may be a mini car, but it's not mini power. And being a BMW, it has extremely good handling. I mean, this thing corners like a dream and then goes. And yes, it's a driver's dream. It is rear wheel drive. You could turn it into a drifter if you wanted, but it would be the world's quietest drifter. Baby does not make noise, even under full speed. <laughs> Man, this thing is fun to drive. So a little car, but an awful lot of power in a tiny little package. Now look at this, this is confusing. Where do you put the gasoline, right? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, huh? Well, like I said, it's got a nine liter gas tank. The gasoline goes in here, and the electricity plugs in the back here. Now, if you've been watching me in length like of time, you know what I have to say about BMW, mainly horrible things. For $21,000, he got himself a fun little rocket, and hey, look, he commutes 60 miles one way to work, has no problems. This is what, to me, electric cars should be about. Little cars that go fast, not big cars. And the speed that this has with the rideability of a BMW suspension and brakes. I gotta say, it's a pretty killer little electric car. Let's say you're a real cheapskate. Hey, where do the Chinese get with their micro cars? They got cars they sell in China. The whole car is $5,000. So, you know, and it's new. That's not secondhand, right? If you want a cheap little electric car, hold on to your horses and wait until the competition gets going, and you'll be able to get them dirt cheap when they start selling them from China for little runabouts. But this thing's a lot more than a little runabout. It's a screamer. Too much technology, yes, I agree. But it's a shame. BMW limited these things to 90 miles an hour. It won't go over 90. It's set to stop at 90. It could certainly handle going over 90. But you have to understand one thing about electric cars. This is a typical normal modern electric car in that it doesn't have various speed transmissions. It's direct drive. And if you get them to high speeds over 100 miles an hour, the motor becomes so inefficient, it's getting too hot, the battery's discharging that fast, that the range would just absolutely plummet if you were driving this thing, say, 120 miles an hour. That's why they limit. They don't want people saying, well, I bought one and it didn't go very far. Yeah, because they were going 130 miles an hour. I'm sure this body could take it, the brakes, the suspension could take it, but it would have such a limited range they get a real bad reputation for it. So they limit it to 90 miles an hour electronically. So here it is, a BMW electric car, and guess what? Scotty wants one. Now they've sold over 210,000 of these things so far. And for BMW, that's a reasonable amount of cars. It's not a big mass, mass production company, realize that. And being an electric car, the problems that BMW has had with some of their other stuff, overuse of plastic, stuff like that, doesn't matter here. You don't have a hot engine melting the plastic parts, a transmission, melting the plastic parts. It's a completely different type of vehicle. And look, it's the Princeton of cars. You remember the other day I made a video on a Ford Ranger that had the cool little redding back that a guy bought from Harvard University. They had three custom made when they got tired of them, got new ones, he bought one of those. This one is a Princeton and it runs circles around that Ranger. This thing is fast, it's fun to drive, it's economical, and if you could get one like he did for less than $22,000 with 30,000 miles on it, that is not a bad deal. Because when it comes to electric cars, smaller is better. It is a small car but it doesn't drive like a small car. And for a car with a wheelbase this small, it has an excellent ride. This thing is 10 times smoother than any Tesla I have ever been in. It doesn't have the weight of the big giant battery low on the ground, ruining the weight disbursement of the vehicle that, yeah, they corner really well, the Teslas, but they ride horrendously on bumpy roads. This thing, has a really smooth ride for a car of this size. And since it is so much smaller, it'll zing you out of your seat too. Yeah, it's not a thousand horsepower, but I mean, really, do we need a thousand horsepower? I got the biggest electric car, you know? Hey, I'd rather have a small one. This thing is fun. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.